Well, I gotta say, this is a great basement. It's got a high ceiling, plenty of clearance under the carrying beam. And what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna show you how to insulate the basement walls and get you prepped for drywalling it. All right, now whenever you're doing a basement over, the main concern that you always have to worry about is moisture. And that's why you had me install this plastic panel? Right, we did this a few weeks ago. What we're looking for is any condensation that should collect on the plastic. If it collects between the plastic and the foundation, that means the foundation's not sealed. Next thing I look for, any condensation that should collect on the surface of the plastic. That's nice and dry. So we're dry, we're all set. Well, we're all set except for one thing. I saw a couple of rust marks right here from these steel ties in the walls. And that tells me that the water might be leaking down. You get any water in this corner of the basement? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, maybe we've got a down spot up here, I think, that might be, need to be redirected. Could be. Well, these concrete ties actually hold the forms when they pour the foundation. When they remove the forms, they have to break off these steel ties. When they do that, they should seal them from the outside to stop water from coming in. Now, you've got a few of them that the water's coming in here. So before we get started, I'm going to show you how to plug these holes from the inside. All right, Brady, take the center punch, put it on that tie, and try to drive it through. Going in? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, good. All right, let's get a couple more here. Tom, how far should these be going through? They only have to go in about a quarter to a half an inch. Good. To plug the holes, we're going to mix up some hydraulic cement. It's really fine, and it's ideal for this application. I'm going to put it in some water. Now, I don't want to mix up too much because it sets up really fast. I won't, only want to put mix up as much as I need. Okay, I'm mixing it up till it's like the consistency of peanut butter. Now, once I put it in the hole, it's going to actually expand inside the hole, and it's going to fill that gap up so water can't leak through. All right, now before I apply the hydraulic cement to the hole, I want you to take that bottle and mist the hole with water. The reason I want you to wet the concrete is I don't want it to take all the water out of my hydraulic cement, so it'll dry evenly. Now I just want to push it in the hole. Just want to force it right in there with the trowel. Squeeze it off, and then we just want to flatten it out. Okay, let's get to the next one. We're going to lose that batch. Great. Starting to get a little stiff, Tom, but I can see how you can work it right in there. Yep, get it in there. All right, before we lose the whole bucket, I got a couple over here I want to grab. Miss those holes for me, yep. Oh, yeah. This is what we're going to insulate your foundation with. It's a two foot wide by eight foot high by two inches thick sheet of polystyrene. It has a tongue and groove joint, so when the pieces go together, it'll be nice and tight. And we're going to apply it to your foundation with an adhesive. This is a foam board adhesive. It's going to stick the foam right to the foundation, specifically formulated for this application. It's very important that you don't have an adhesive with a solvent in it because the solvent would actually deteriorate or eat the foam. Okay, now just tip the top into that space up above, push it into the corner, and hold it against the foundation. Okay, hold it there for a minute, I'll get another sheet. All right, next sheet. Okay, tight. Now we're ready to mark the next piece to go around this carrying beam. So I'm going to lay this piece on top of the last piece that we installed, line it up. I'll take a piece of scrap foam board, two feet wide, place it against the beam, and I'm going to mark along this end of it. I'm going to take it, bring it down, and line this side up with the outside edge of the beam right here. And I'm going to put a mark right there. And take my level, go across the bottom of the beam with a level line, and mark between my two marks. Now I'll cut that piece out. 
This is where the slot needs to be cut for the beam. I have a reference line on each side of the beam. I want to extend those all the way up to the top of the sheet. Just using the end of my tape to cut a groove. Now I'll just cut it out with a handsaw. See how it fits. Okay, yeah, good touch. Okay, let's get the next one. Okay, there you go. That's pretty good, Tom. About an hour we got this whole wall up. I told you it was gonna go fast. Now we have to think about how you're going to attach your drywall to the wall. And how are we going to do that? We're actually going to make a wood grid system using this 1x3 spruce board. First thing I did is I measured to the top of the foundation over here. And then I measured down about 3 inches and I put a line over here. I then measured up off the floor about 3 inches and placed another line. Then I divided the space in half and put a center line. I divided the top space in half, put another line. Divided the bottom space in half with another line. I got it. So we're going to have five horizontal nailing strips. Right. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to snap some chalk lines all the way across the wall and apply our wood strips. All right. Here's how we're going to attach the spruce boards to the wall. This is called a spring spike. It doesn't have a point on the end like a regular nail, but it has a little bend on the end. It acts like a spring. When I drive this in through the concrete, that spring will try to straighten out, holding the spike into the wall. The spring spike is four inches long. I have to drill a hole for it. The hole has to be five inches deep because I don't want the spring spike to bottom out when I drive it home. To drill the holes, I'm using a hammer drill with a 3 16 masonry bit. All right, that's great. Now, Brady, you could actually install the wall board right to the horizontals, but I want to create more depth to accommodate the electrical. To do that, we're going to run more one by three boards, only this time vertically right on the surface of the horizontals. And to attach them, I'm going to use drywall screws. Now, we're attaching our pieces of one by three vertically, 16 inches on center, to fasten our wall board to them. What do you think, Brady? Tom, this looks excellent. Well, now what we have are two chases. We can run a wire down from the ceiling vertically or horizontally behind the uprights. By building the wall out, we've also created more depth in the wall, so now we can use a standard electrical outlet. If we want to mount it here, we dig out a little bit of insulation and then put it in up against the one by. This is fantastic. You got me all set. I'm going to get my brother in here this weekend to help me finish it off. Well, good luck. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.